The divides between Americans grew even sharper in 2023 with political clashes over reproductive health care, education, and American involvement in numerous wars overseas. MSNBC correspondent Tremaine Lee takes a look back at the year where America seemed to be at war with itself. In 2023, America seemed to be at war with itself. With battle lines drawn over hard-fought legal gains, long protected by precedent, now facing a fresh round of conservative attacks, court challenges, and state-level restrictions. We want to keep 36 states have introduced 137 bills to restrict teaching on race, gender, and history, according to a PEN America report. On the front lines, public school classrooms, libraries. Organizations like the American Library Association are tracking more book bans than ever, and many of them are aimed at books with the LGBTQ plus themes. School bookshelves. Amanda Gorman says she was gutted to learn that a Florida school had restricted some of its youngest students from reading the poem that she famously recited at President Biden's inauguration. From a fight over whose history is taught and how. Floridians rallying against Governor Ron DeSantis' Stop Woke Act and his rejection of an advanced placement African-American studies class. We want education, not indoctrination. There's no way to teach history without having the, the emotional aspect of it included. To a history-making decision by the nation's highest court, effectively banning race-based college admissions. A sharply divided court scrapping decades of precedent. Igniting frenzied debate over whether America's pledge to make good its promises of equality for all has been fully extended to its most marginalized citizens. Justice Jackson writing, with let them eat cake obliviousness, the majority pulls the ripcord and announces colorblindness for all by legal fiat. Just off campus, a clash between pro-Israel students and a pro-Palestinian group. As war raged in the Middle East, college campuses in America became battlegrounds as well, where the boundaries between free speech and hate speech became trench lines. So the answer is yes, that calling for the genocide of Jews violates Harvard Code of Conduct, correct? It depends on the context. It does not depend on the context. The answer is yes, and this is why you should resign. University professors were tested before Congress and the nation. University of Pennsylvania President Elizabeth McGill resigned over the weekend. The embattled president of Harvard is staying, at least for now. Outraged tonight in Nashville in reaction to Republican-led efforts to expel three Democratic lawmakers from the state legislature. The fury spread to the floors of America's state houses, where civil rights, like free speech, would be heat-checked. With the ouster of rising political stars accused of breaking decorum while fighting for gun reform. Do you feel this is a dangerous precedent? This sets a very dangerous precedent for the nation that other states will follow. The conservative clampdown wouldn't just tighten its grip on those who represent the progressive body politic, but those whose bodies and how they're presented have themselves become political. Tennessee will become the first state to implement a law restricting drag performances in public or anywhere a child might see them. At least 14 other states have similar bills in progress. And mounting restrictions on women's access to reproductive health care. I think forcing me to continue the pregnancy and the pain and suffering, I think it's cruel. As long as I am governor of the great state of Texas, Texas will always protect the unborn. But this war over America's political ideals, where people power is flexed in the streets and at the polls, where in the courts, ground is lost and ground is gained. The LGBTQ community wins a court battle. A U.S. district judge in Tennessee deeming the state's Adult Entertainment Act, a law that would criminalize some drag performances, an unconstitutional restriction. As the high court today reaffirmed the key part of the Voting Rights Act aimed at preventing race discrimination. People standing up, shouting back, marching, voting. The abortion access is the law of the land in Ohio. Fighting for freedom, for power, for respect. No justice, no peace. With former Tennessee lawmaker Justin Jones back to the state house just days after his expulsion. This is what justice looks like. This is what democracy looks like. MSNBC's Tremaine Lee with that powerful report. And, and Reverend Sharpton, I mean, you go down the line of a number of things that seem to divide us 
this past year. And my fear is that those those gaps, those divides, those tension, that will all only grow as we head into 2024 and what will be perhaps the ugliest and most consequential election year we've ever seen. No, I think you're right. I, I don't see how it does not become uh, that. When you look at the fact that you have women's right to choose, voting rights, DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion programs, are uh, just about suspended because of a Supreme Court decision on affirmative action. All of the things the last half century that have been the pillars of this country in terms of its social interaction uh, has now been in many ways undermined or undercut and the rise of hate crimes. I mean, when you look at the data of, of uh, the rise of anti-Semitic hate crimes, uh, hate crimes against blacks, I'll never forget in August of this year when we had the large civil rights demonstration, Martin Luther King the Third, and Andrea King and I are uh, commemorating the 60th anniversary. While we were marching, three blacks were killed at Dollar General in Jacksonville, Florida by a self-described white supremacist. We're not talking about in the 50s, we're talking about this year. All of that brings us into uh, the uh, 24 election and how we deal with the fact that not only do you have these supremacists or vigilantes or whatever lone figures or, or collective groups in the bushes, but you have those on the Supreme Court that have dialed back voting rights, affirmative actions, women's right to choose, things we took for granted just a couple of years ago. I'm just really concerned about the tenor in this country of dehumanizing political enemies and how Americans just can't even talk to each other anymore. And on in different polls you see where someone on one side will say that opposite political beliefs, that's their enemy. And the way we're speaking now going into this election year, it doesn't bode well to have a free and fair election that voters are going to accept. And certainly just in recent days, we have heard Donald Trump use the language of Adolf Hitler when it describes others, when it describes immigrants. And I've said this a lot on this show, but officials I speak to all the time say they deeply are deeply concerned about the possibility of political violence uh, as Election Day approaches. 2024 promises to be a tough one uh, for this nation.